So now I'm ready to start a gouache painting. I approach it just the same way as I would an oil painting or a, an acrylic painting. Obviously I'm going to do the same subject matter. I'm going to, I'm going to continue this green apple uh, image photo reference. Then I have a piece of heavy weight cold press illustration board, a crescent. It has a nice uh, medium textured tooth to it, so it grabs the gouache and, it, and the paper surface is uh, really a nice surface to really use uh, watercolor or gouache with because it stains that uh, paper surface beautifully. All right, I've masked it off with a white artist tape just to get a nice clean edge if I go clear off uh, the board with my paint. I've got my palette all set up. I've got my brushes ready to roll. Here is that little uh, reactivation of my palette paint demo that I just did for you. I just wanted to, to come back in and uh, grab some liquid or fresh paint. And I'm going to do some really, uh, I'm just going to hit that opaque highlight because right now because I painted wet into wet all of my edges are soft all of those pigments mixed together because it was so diluted and the the paint was since I reactivated it was just basically uh, stained water and when when I painted it wet into wet it became really soft edged uh, image making and so now I'm just going to demonstrate really quickly the characteristic of an opaque brush stroke so right on top of that soft that soft um, highlight I just now put uh, a really nice hard edge now the one thing that that will happen to your gouache is that once it dries, it, it loses a little bit of the integrity of the color, like the saturation. And then it will <clears throat> be a little bit more flat. So it changes just a little bit. So I'm, I'm now just demoing. Um, if you can notice on this little demo that I'm painting, it was wet into wet. It was really thin, transparent layers that I put on there. And now I'm going back in with a little bit thicker, more opaque uh, paint for this gouache. And I'm just going to hit some lights and build up that same concept, dark to light and thin to thick. Okay. I'm going to hit a little bit of light on the stem just for just for fun just for me <laughs> I had I had uh, a little bit of fun demoing the the reactivation of my palette used up paint on this little demo and now I'm just going to continue on with it a little bit so just like acrylic once you get a little bit too thick of paint with gouache and it starts to dry it, when you're mixing it starts to grab just a little bit it starts to get sticky so I'll just go and barely touch the tip of my uh, brush into the water to kind of make that thicker or more opaque paint a little bit more fluid and then I'll start to hit some of those highlights on the stem Okay, same concept. If I want to come back in with some darker darks, just so I get some, a little bit more interesting accents going on with this little demo. For example, that uh, where the core is, I'll come in and paint where the core might be. Okay, and maybe hit, I like that soft um, apple as it just drifts into the 
into the shadow. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. That is the little reactivation demo with that was thin, very transparent to start out with, with reactivated paint. And then um, I came back in and did some opaque paint over the top of it. And I came back in with some dark accents. Let me just grab a little bit of that dark accent down there at the bottom. Just to anchor it down just a little bit. And that's that reactivated demo. All right, so I'll set that aside and I'll start to treat my And I'm going to just going <clears> to <throat> start this demo with a graphite pencil drawing over the raw indicate the raw um, illustration board I like using pencil most traditional watercolorists will use uh, a, an original drawing you could do a photocopy transfer you can do all of that fun stuff but I'm gonna I'm gonna treat this a little bit more like a traditional watercolor at first and then I'll and then I'll accent all of the fun um, gouache qualities of, of the opaque paint as I keep painting. Okay, so there's that. This would be, now I'm not going to fix this or anything. I'll just keep it as an original drawing. I'm drawing pretty light. some indications of lighting back there. I've got my core shadow indicated there. I'm going to have fun with some soft edges down there. Um, and that's about where I'm that's about where I'm going to take this little uh, original drawing with my graphite. And then I'll have my photo reference right here next to me as I uh, start to paint. So now I'm ready to um, start applying the gouache. I'm going to use a large brush. Uh, it's a pretty stiff brush. I'm going to have fun with that kind of that warm neutral gray. Um, I'm going to try to keep this painting pretty cool. Even though I just grabbed that warm gray, that's a kind of a mid neutral color. I'm going to cool it down with some of my blues. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of approach this as a monochromatic cool painting. I'm going to wet that gouache down quite a bit. Maybe I'll go with an analogous. Back to front. Thin to thick. If, if you can tell right now, this is a very thin watercolory start. Neutralize those colors. So when I said monochromatic, um, I was gonna, I was gonna really talk about um, keeping it in the same families of all of the cools right now. So 
and keep neutralizing those colors with that gray. Not too worried about my edges. Now, if you remember, I did not fix my drawing. And because this paint is so transparent, I don't have any problem seeing my drawing. And it doesn't wash off. as easily as other mediums. So if this was acrylic, it'd probably wash that drawing off just a little bit more. So I'm having fun with some wet into wet right now, trying to establish my, my uh, values and some fun watermarks. What, it, what it's usually called is a bleed, okay? I'm gonna set that color down for a second. Now I'm gonna grab some greens. You notice, I don't want it to be too saturated. Um, so I keep reaching up there and grabbing that common denominator color of neutral, that neutral gray color. And what I'm doing is I'm mixing up um, the, basically the green apple and I'm mixing it so it harmonizes with, I'm mixing that green color in with all the other colors that I've established so far so it um, unifies. And like with acrylic, I, if I was remaining a traditional watercolor, I would have left the highlight area right in that area. I would have left it as white, um, as a white highlight or the paper color, the surface of the paper. But because I'm going to be doing a gouache painting, I'm going to um, come back in with opaque paint and build up those highlights and those half tones. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring that local color into the, into the shadow. It's going to be a little bit more blue purple, obviously wetting that paint down. And I'm going to let it bleed in with all that soft, beautiful, uh, cool colors that I've already established. Okay. Then I'm going to start building up. It's now you normally I would probably have um, a hair dryer with me. And I would start to uh, dry this painting so I can start now coming back in with some hard edges. But since it's wet into wet, it's still going to maintain that, that soft because those colors bleed together. So if I wanted to hit that edge or that painting with, with a hairdryer, it would help um, dry that off really quickly. And then I could go into my, a little bit more of my hard edged scenario. Okay. So right now it's, it's, it's like I'm painting a wet oil painting. So it's wet into wet and it, all the colors are starting to blend together. And I'm going to use that to my advantage. But it's also looking really soft and it's hard for my eye to focus on anything. 
And so with that, I'm going to let it dry after I get the, the areas that I really want to get become hard edged. I'll let it dry. And then I will come back in with opaque paint and build those hard edges up with opaque paint. Okay. So there's my cast shadow and I'm establishing some nice darks in there now. My paint is starting to drip just a little bit and me mesh out. Not too worried about that. I'm going to bring it back down. Those green colors I'm going to bring back down into the actual apple. So down here at the bottom end of this painting, uh, the the this part of the painting down here has has already set up. It's already dry, and so now I can I can really have fun with um, getting some hard edges with that opaque paint. So if you notice, my palette is really wet. It, you can tell that it's that it's dripping off into uh, the different parts of my palette. So that's the other reason I, I use a um, container that will contain all of that. If it was just a flat piece of disposable palette paper or flat piece of glass or something like that, it would probably run all over the place and that's um, a little bit not uh, for cleanliness. You'll, you'll have gouache dripping all over the place so you you better uh, understand that it will it better be contained okay I'm going to grab some of that color and bleed it up into the body of that shadow side of that apple that's some of that primary blue color okay I'm going to <clears throat> reach over and, and start, since this is set up, I'm going to reach over and I'm going to start lightening, lightening, lighting the floor just a little bit. Grab just a little bit of green so it harmonizes up. Right before your very eyes, I can start to come in with that opaque paint and I can start to clean that up, get some of that hard edge that, that I will bring back to help focus the eye. So again, I'm, I'm trying to keep that and maintain that, that kind of analogous color scheme. So blue, blue, green, a little bit of violet in there. So I'm going to try to keep this a little bit more harmonious because of the, the um, local color of my object. up that horizon line and I'm going to come back in with um, some opaque color for that background it's kind of a purple color I'll grab some of that neutral warm gray to neutralize it so it's not so saturated so you'll be able to tell on my palette that this is really thin and diluted gouache down into like a watercolor and now you can see a little bit more power with the with the um, opaque paint. I'm going to come in and I'm going to kind of carve out 
the stem. Of that apple that I exaggerated just a little bit in the photo references like um, one of my other demos I wanted to elongate that stem and just have it a little bit more expressive than just a just a flat little stubby so now I'm just um, having fun with the dark to light principle and the thin to thick so I'm putting a little bit more thick opaque paint over that thin initial wash that I put down and if you've noticed my palette it was that darker purple neutral uh, neutralized purple color and now I'm building it up to a lighter so that that dark to light principle is now into effect I'm coming in and having fun with making this a it's going to be a dark apple on a light background. And thin to thick. see that just a little bit better so now I'm using quite a bit of white opaque paint still mixing it in with that that uh, harmonious color and playing with some edges I'm trying to answer that question now you can see that that's a really opaque brush stroke right there to carve out those um, soft edges So it looks a little bit more traditional gouache now instead of a watercolor. You're going to see a little bit more hard edge brush strokes. And we'll go from there. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm building up uh, what is really important principle right now is, yes, I went back to front, thin to thick, dark to light. But now I'm, I'm I haven't even... Uh, address the, the local color or the color of the stem what I'm doing is I'm, I'm establishing some values right now so that it will it will uh, read as a dark figure on a light background and then I'll come back in with some color and paint on top of those values and establish those um, harmonious colors that I'm trying to go for here. Okay, so now the, the other principle that I've, that I've kind of talked about in the past is thin to thick or lean to fat where you keep the shadows really lean or thin or transparent. And that shadow side of the apple that I'm not probably going to touch that anymore. I'm going to leave that thin and transparent, and I'm just going to build up around it, just for aesthetic reasons. And and you'll you'll see that old masters did that as well. Their um, shadows were were very thin and transparent. So that's what I'm going to kind of try to mimic in this piece. going to build up around that 
stem, make it read just a little bit better. Have fun with some brush strokes. Now, the one thing that I am going to demo here in a second is if some of those brush strokes get a little bit too uh, distracting, then I will demonstrate the power of gouache and that reactivation. And you probably already can guess where I'm going to go with that when I reactivate some of those brush strokes. So you can kind of see that that once was a really soft edge apple up there where that green color is. Now with my opaque gouache brush strokes, I'm starting to uh, make that a little bit more hard edge so you can focus in on that just a little bit better. Same with down here on the ground plane. And the other, the other fun note there is that I can reactivate that green apple color <clears throat> to harmonize up with what I had originally had. Just a little bit of dry brush and scumbling around in there. My paint on the palette is getting a little dry, so I just had to reactivate it. Now that this this area is now drying up here, I. I that's why I switched down and went over here so this area could dry because if I just keep painting wet into wet, it'll just keep being soft. So now that that is dry, I'll come back in and really start to play with the, those shapes. I think the body of the apple is now dry. Uh, it's still a little bit wet. I think the, the stem is uh, dry enough that I can bring in some of that uh, darker value and, and paint on the stem just a little bit. I'll let it dry just for a second and then I'll come back and paint on it some more. <laughs> 